Thank you for stopping by to check out my makeover today. I'm going to be flipping this dresser into something unrecognizable to what you see right now. And I'm going to be using all Dixie Belle products for this makeover. I'm going to be changing out the hardware that this piece has. It has all the original hardware, but I wanted to go in a different direction for the look of this piece. So I'm going to use Dixie Belle's mud in white to fill in all of the holes where the hardware was. When you do this, you're going to want to put an extra amount in there because as it dries, it shrinks a little bit. So you want to make sure that when you go to sand it, there's not going to be any dips in where the little holes were. Now that I have everything sanded down to the way that I want it and nice and smooth, I'm going to use Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Roads to stain the bare wood on the top of this dresser as well as the feet of the dresser and then I'm going to be adding a wood trim around the bottom that I will also be staining with the same color stain. The thing that I love most about this Voodoo Gel Stain is that it doesn't have a smell. I'm very chemically sensitive to smells. I get sore throats really easily from like chemically smelly things and this doesn't do that for me so I love it. Then I'm going to be painting the body of this piece in Midnight Sky, which is like an almost black color. And I'm going to add a little bit of the Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat to this to make it a one-step paint so that I don't have to seal it afterwards. This is a little hack that I've learned over the years with using different chalk paints. If you want it to be one-step paint that you don't have to seal again later, you just add the clear coat into the paint before you start painting.
In order to make this piece extra special, I'm going to be adding a transfer, and Dixie Belle's Bells and Whistle line has a ton of awesome transfers. The one that I'm choosing is the Nautical Life one, and it comes with all of these images that you see here on the back, but I am just going to be using this mermaid one. It reminds me of traditional style um, Sailor Jerry mermaid drawings, and it has really cool black and white highlights and lowlights in it. The details are just absolutely beautiful. And this is my first time ever using a transfer, so any brand at all. And it was so easy. You'll get to see what it's like for somebody who's a beginner at doing transfers to apply a transfer seamlessly. All I did was center it and lay it down nice and smooth. And then I took the little wood stick here that comes with it and just pushed it down and rubbed it really well onto the surface to make sure that it's stuck. It kind of reminds me of when you're a little kid and you have those tattoos that you put on and you get them wet and then you like rub it on and then you peel it off and you have the tattoo. <laughs> it was a little bit like that. So when you're doing this, keep that in mind. You're just going to want to keep checking, peel back and check to make sure that it's stuck down well enough which is what I'm doing right here. If it hasn't stuck down all the way, just put the plastic back down and then rub it again and boom, you're done. Make sure that you put a clear coat over top of your transfer to protect it, just like you would with paint or anything else like that. I'm going to be using this Dixie Belle sponge. You just get it damp like a makeup sponge and apply it generously across the top. You don't want it to be too thick and you want to smooth it out nice and even and this will prevent you from having any brush strokes and I personally would recommend at least three coats. To add some extra details, I'm going to be using this faux nail head trim that I got from Walmart. They also sell it at Joann's Fabric, but it's cheaper at Walmart. And I'm going to just use that same midnight sky color and wipe it across the top of each one to kind of antique it. It was way too shiny in its original color. Then I'm just going to go ahead and cut these to fit in the space. I'm just going to dry fit them so that way when it comes time to glue them on, it's a seamless, easy process. For the handles, I'm going to be using this leather strap material that I picked up from Joann's. It was $9.99, but with the half off coupon, you get it for half of that. And I'm just going to measure out and cut in exactly identical sized pieces to put the handles on. To attach these faux nail head trims, I'm going to use a Surebonder glue gun with the fine tip on it and also their hot glue. Their hot glue is far superior to others in my opinion and it holds really, really well and using the fine tip makes it so that you don't see any hot glue spilling out behind these pieces. When attaching the handles, you're going to want to pre-drill through the leather and the wood at the same time, wipe off the sawdust, and then screw through both at the same time. I also glued on the faux nail head trim so that it looked like it was put on there with the nail heads. And now I'm going to go ahead and stain the feet of the piece and then add the wood trim across the bottom.
Make sure that you clear coat over top of the stain on the bottom. Finally, just for some extravagance, I'm going to add Big Mama's Butter to this piece and this is in a rose scent. I'm just going to be applying it with a big fluffy brush and this way the leather will get this deep tone to it and the whole piece will have a beautiful shine that will age over time and turn back to a semi-matte finish. But man, does this stuff smell really good. Here it is, the final product. I love this transfer, it is gorgeous. I can't wait to do more of them. And this dresser, I feel, is completely unrecognizable to what I started with. Not bad for a trashed piece found on the side of the road, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the process, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below to see more. Bye!